What is going on, everybody? This is Chris, aka Bludger Kushner, bringing you more Mob the Dead gameplay. Um, my primary goal in this was to get to a high round, but I wanted to try and do some of the Easter egg in solo mode. So, um, yeah, just enjoy the video, and I'll be commenting throughout it. Just explaining the different steps and procedures I take to get to the round I get to. Pretty solid gameplay. I didn't go down until round 25, which is pretty good. Um, here you see I'm getting a double points, trying to maximize my points before I leave the spawn area, which maximizing your points before you leave the spawn area is crucial to your progress throughout the entire map because you will realize when you make more points you it really takes a lot off your shoulders you aren't as rushed to keep as many bullets going into the zombies you got enough points as it is and you're not worried about it um, here we go towards the Hellhound spawn. Lock, um, yeah, very interesting though. When you unlock the door, you drop down here, there's that poster. Um, you really don't have any clue of where the warden key is to spawn. So it's really just a wild guess. And unfortunately, the warden's key wasn't in this area in this game. I'm not ready to give up yet. And uh, speak of maximize points, when you grab the M14 and you're on round 4, if you put 3 bullets into their chest, directly into their chest area, and then you knife them after, it should kill them with one hit, so it's kind of like an instant kill. You just shoot them three times in the chest if it's round four, and then knife them for the final blow, and then, uh, like, if it's round five and you shoot four bullets into their chest, you can still knife them once and they'll die, so that's a good way to maximize your points. Um, I'm in afterlife mode, just activating that for the heck of it, in case I need it later. There's the mystery box, speed cola. Yeah, this gameplay was about mm, two hours and fifty minutes, and as you can see, I got lucky with the box. First try, ray gun, and that probably was the deal breaker in this whole game. Was the ray gun? The ray gun saved my ass more than enough times doing some ownage with the Galil some of this gameplay is sped up for the sole purpose of time conservation I didn't want to use so much um, memory not only that I didn't want to use so much memory on my computer but I didn't want to have my work cut out for me. Um, I did cut some of the parts short, and I did speed up some of the parts, but that was just so I could get in everything in as little time as I could. Um, here you see me kind of training in the cafeteria. The acid trap works wonders, but... I mean, by the time you get into the acid trap, you know, they start spawning through the windows, so it's kind of useless unless you're getting chased by a whole bunch of zombies. There, I shocked the panel to drop the warden's key. And that is to open the door to the laundry mat, which is to my right, right there. 
and from this point on, I just progress to the Citadel Tunnels, open up the place where you put in the code to get the part that is hanging in the middle of the tunnel. Very interesting uh, easter egg. I don't know if you're meant to do it with more people or not, but I couldn't do the last step. And you'll see that further on in the video. You see the numbers on the side of the walls as I go down. And um, I have to put that in in order to get the part. <clears throat> the ray gun is definitely a lifesaver. As long as you know how to use it, you know, you're you're good. And that door back there I just bought that served as a great place to sort of camp um, you know just gather as much points as you can just so you can progress easier throughout the map as I said before points really do add confidence as you're playing zombies it takes so much pressure off you knowing that you have a lot of points and you don't have to worry about going in our round and regaining required points and this is the generator room if you will um, here you have to shock three panels or whatever those are three systems and um, that unlocks the door that is electrified up in the uh, warden's office and I'm pretty sure I have a shot of that coming up soon um <clears throat> going back up through the citadel tunnels there's that door i was talking about and that is the engine part to the airplane i got the engine right here <clears throat> and that is one of the pieces to the acid gat And um, this is the Hellhound spawn, and um, this got a little bit tricky, I'm not going to lie, I almost went down here, I sped it up just so it wouldn't take as long, and right around here, as you can see, I kind of get overrun there, get overrun there, and right there, I almost went down for the count, they just swarmed so quickly, it's crazy. And, um, yeah, so this is how I did that, and, um, there was one hellhound down. And, uh, this is where I activate the electric cherry perk very useful um, I have a couple good moments where you can actually see just how good this perk is when you're being overrun by zombies it's very useful especially when you're going for high rounds obviously because it stuns the zombies to the point where they can't hit you And that is always a good thing. I love the new animation they did with the ray gun. Um, for when... I, I kind of don't like when you come back from afterlife, you have to re-activate the gun. And by that, I mean like the animation when you, you know, pull the bolt back or whatever like you just saw with the ray gun you have to do that every time you come back from the afterlife and that can kinda get you in trouble if there's a whole bunch of zombies near you I'm going up to infirmary very odd voices I don't even know why those voices are there there's an R part to the Asagat. 
and a part to the plane. And uh, there's our other Hellhound location. And this is how you simply down the roof. Very simple, not hard at all. I thought it was going to be tough getting onto the roof, but it's not that hard. <clears throat> Jump up here. Shock this, and this opens the door. And there's Deadshot Daiquiri. Which, I don't think it's that useful. And I speed this up once again. Just to, you know, kill time. And, um, just so you see that I did, in fact, activate the Hellhound that is required to get the Hell's Retriever. And there you see the confirmation of the glowing wolf symbol that I did, in fact, um, I did, in fact, feed all the souls required to the Hellhound. <laughs> Close call. Jumping over to zombies. The Tommy gun. Love this gun. You'll see later on just how powerful this gun is. It's really crazy because I held one of these guns before and these things weigh about 12 pounds without ammo in the drum, the drum mag. And, I mean, ammo is not light. When it is packed into one magazine, it is not light. And there you see the final Hellhound location. And I got a piece of the zombie shield back there. But yeah, this gun weighs about 12 pounds without the ammunition. And I held this and it was just like... It was crazy how, um, how heavy it is for, you know, the type of gun that they used so much in World War II. It was really a shock to feel just how heavy it was. <clears throat> And there you saw the gate that opens up to the oxygen tank. And there's the final piece for the zombie shield, which always spawns in that room, I believe, or around it. <laughs> Speeding up, so you can see that I activated the hellhound. Get a little bit of ray gun action. I never get tired of using the freaking thing. The toughest part about it is just getting swarmed and not spraying with it, because that gets you killed a lot. Um, especially while PhD flopper. And there you see the Hell's Retriever. This weapon is pretty decent. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, it allows you to grab power-ups that are out of your reach, so that's a plus. And uh, here you see me going to activate the electricity needed to start the laundry machine just to get the sheets out of it, which I don't know why the hell you need sheets to fly a plane, but whoever floats your boat, Treyarch. <laughs> and... Again, I'm speeding up. Hell's Retriever. This isn't that difficult at all, especially if you're at the end of a round. All you gotta do is hold off the zombies. Very simple. And there's the sheets for the plane. Or not sheets, but, you know, it's clothing, so... For whatever reason, you need clothing, the proper clothing, to get on this plane. <coughs> There's where you activate the golden spark, which you will see in this game. I did, in fact, unlock it, and I was completely happy about that. And I'm also going to show you all the skull locations as well.
And this here is probably one of the most awesome animations, if you will, <laughs> is in zombies so far that I've seen. I love that scene, just taking off the lighthouse, you know, the sky. Um, and uh, later on, you can actually find out some background information about this event and you see the fireworks off in the distance it happens so that this takes place New Year's Eve or New Year's Day and I believe it's New Year's Day um, and of course California and here I'm just training on the bridge very easy place to train this is my first time attempting this I never really stayed on the bridge for this long. You see the electric cherry perk doing its job, keeping back the zombies. And there's the rather diabolical way you teleport from the Golden Gate Bridge back to Alcatraz. And, uh, you're pretty much back where you spawn. But that is a rather sinister way to kind of teleport. And there's one of the skulls. Um, that was one of the skulls. And here I'm going to break down the poster with my Hell's Retriever. And this is when I start showing you the parts to the Easter Egg and the steps to get the Golden Spork. And here's another location for the crystal skull. <clears throat> Very unique um, how they set this map up. And uh, this is where you go to the spork. There's a hidden thing back here. And as you look on the ground right there, you shock it. And you should hear a laugh like that from the mystery box. And this is the second spork location, and I'm um, building the acid gat, or the station where you craft it. There's the other spork, right on that table. And these spawns do not move for the sporks, they're in the same place every game. And then what you do after you get the second location, you come up here, and you hold X on that. And you see it stirring in the tub of blood. But yeah, if you're doing that with more players, you all need to hold X on the tub. And there you see another skull. But hold X on the tub all at the same time. And there's another skull. And you see PhD Flopper. And what I discovered in this game is mule kick so um, there's the final skull and I had uh, trouble getting to it it took me a while and then I after sitting back and thinking I thought well maybe I should try jumping so I jump and there I get the skull and you hear the mystery box laugh then after that you go back to the warden's office and this happens Fucking awesome. <laughs> it's like a whirlwind of flames coming up from the warden's desk, and you grab the blunder gat. <clears throat> and here I'm converting it to the acid gat. That's what I've been talking about all this time. Now this is where it gets tricky. <laughs> I must have sat down here for three minutes, which felt like eternity, trying to survive. But what you do after you get that blunder gap from the warden's office, you come down to the laundry room. And you circle, such as what I'm doing right now. 
Um, you kill as many zombies as possible, and when you do this correctly, you'll know for sure, because you'll hear the laugh from the box once again. I love this area, it's very detailed, um, just sinister with all the bodies hanging and it's really creepy and eerie and just, I, I just, it, words can't describe how awesome they did on this map. Yeah, that round wasn't even enough zombies, apparently, to activate the golden spore. Got stuck there. And there you hear the laugh. I'm going back up to infirmary to get the golden spork. Now this thing is just fucking cool. And I believe this is a one-hit kill until either round 33 or 34. Here we're going back to the gate. Golden Gate Bridge. Of course. Now this thing looks so fucking awesome, pack a bunch. And um here you see me activate the trap. The trap works wonders. There you just saw the golden spark in action, and you just saw it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is um, where I pretty much try and do the last part of the easter egg. Um, here I'm back up on the bridge. This fucking guy spawns. I pwn him in like three seconds. Not even. It's crazy because I got... I think one of these rounds I got like four of those guys spawn like right in front of me. It was crazy. And this is one of the last parts to the Easter egg. Now these numbers you enter are the numbers to the prisoners. And I'll probably put the numbers in the description for everyone who needs the numbers. But it's yeah, you need to have a couple afterlifes for this, or else you will die. As you saw there, I almost didn't make it back. And here I'm entering the other couple of numbers. And you need to travel to the Golden Gate Bridge three times in order to enter these numbers. And when you come back from the third time being on the bridge, the numbers indicated here should be switching. 
and that will indicate you can complete the next steps. And I'll just shut up at this part so you can listen to the audio. My name is Stanley Ferguson. I was a guard at Alcatraz from 1933 to 1942. Today, I'm going to give you some insight into one of the more interesting tales from the prison's history. Over the decades, Alcatraz has seen more than its fair share of daring escape attempts. However, few were as audacious as the one undertaken by four inmates on New Year's Eve, Thought to be the brainchild of an inmate by the name of Albert Oliver, the outrageous scheme was as unlikely as its mastermind. Fire this won't last. It never does. It's believed that Oliver, aka the Weasel, somehow convinced three other inmates that he had devised a foolproof plan to escape the rock. It was a plan that would see them literally taking to the skies on a makeshift aircraft of Arlington's own design. Just how the Weasel managed to convince these hardened criminals that such a plan was even possible remains a mystery to this day. What is known is that no such plane was ever built. Instead, the group's plans for freedom soon descended into bitter argument and infighting. With the plan falling apart, anger and frustration would ultimately lead to a brutal altercation between the misguided Arlington and his former co-conspirators. Armed only with makeshift weapons, Finn O'Leary, Sal DeLuca, and Billy Hanson lured the unsuspecting Arlington to the roof, where they intended to exact a bloody and violent revenge. And so it was here, beneath the dark and stormy winter skies, that the hapless Arlington met his grisly end, bleeding to death on the cold concrete roof. For their participation in the murder, the three collaborators were sent to death by electric chair. Justice came swiftly. On the morning of January 19, 1934, the execution order was carried out. So there you have it. The audio files indicate that Weasel, better known as Arlington, was the mastermind behind the whole let's craft a plane and get the fuck off this island plan. Um, the plan did not go well. What happened was, the other guys disagreed, and there was an exchange of words, and in an act of a revenge, Arlington was lured up to the roof and basically slaughtered by all three of the other characters. And they were later executed the next day. But, yeah, pretty grisly story <laughs> I mean weasel just seemed like he was out of his mind I guess that's kind of what his character is and here I'm attempting the last part of the Easter egg where you supposedly go in afterlife and you can board the plane and fly to the bridge and here you see it's not possible in solo which I was kind of bummed out but I'm glad I got most of the steps down. I'm not going to complain. I have a golden spork, good weapons, and I'm at a very high round right now. <laughs> I had three of those guys chasing after me. Just then. Well, two, but... If you count one I killed before then, I had three. And this is an easy way to get the achievement, which is GG Bridge, and it's worth 30 gamer score. Basically, you have to last a round on this bridge as long as it's round 15 or higher.
and see the zombie get diced by the ray gun. And then the vitrolic. I forgot what the hell it's called, Vitrolic Withering, there we go, Vitrolic Withering, decimating the zombies, there you see the Golden Spork, and there's the achievement. Yeah, I almost get screwed by three of the guards. And there you see that bench was destroyed by the guard. And you have to actually pay 2000 to get that workbench up and running again. And to get your part off of it. Saw a little bit of that AK. The Tommy gun. This is when I really find out just how fucking beast this gun is even without the pack a punch this gun still kicks ass and what is even more awesome you can buy ammo off the wall and this is funny right here watch this zombie go flying <clears throat> this was hilarious. Whoa! <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I didn't notice that until a couple of seconds after it happened. I was like, what the hell was that that just flew across the screen? And I didn't. I wasn't sure on what it was. I was assuming it was a zombie, but I didn't know if it was. And uh, I guess it was, so. You saw the death machine a little bit. It's um, a good weapon if you camp somewhere, but I would not recommend running around with it, because I went down using that, and it was just horrible. You can barely run with it. And here we are at the bridge again. A speakeasy. I could have swore they named it the Tommy Gun from the preview of Mob of the Dead, but I guess they changed the name for some reason. So it's the speakeasy. I remember in World at War it was the Gibbs Omatic. And, um. Yeah, it, it was pretty decent. Um. But I kind of like this Tommy gun a lot better. It just looks so much more impressive and detailed. Kaboom. And this is where I pretty much just, I'm um, trying to survive. That's all I'm doing. Trying to survive, and um, you'll see here that using Golden Spork still, and it's still a one hit kill. Use Vitrolic Withering, and you can get killed by the splash damage by the Vitrolic Withering, but it takes a lot to actually kill you. I think you might have to get hit like three times and then have two of the acid bombs or whatever the things are that it shoots. It has to have two of the acid bombs blow up on you in order to down you. This gun is just so fucking beast. Take this 
Yeah, I kind of got boring with uh, zombies for a little bit. And uh, I decided to end it at 34 rounds because my capture card was running out of room. And I really didn't feel like being up for another two, three hours. I was already up a long ass time doing zombies. But yep, this is where I'm going to call the commentary off and you can just enjoy the rest of the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and favorite this video. And, well, not like and subscribe and favorite the video, but, you know. Like and favorite the video, share it with people, get my name out there, it will really help me out a lot. Um, I spent so much time on this and really to let it all just go unnoticed by many would be pretty tragic. I mean, I'm not the biggest YouTuber out there, but I put a lot of time into this and it would mean a lot if, you know, if this video is just shared around and, you know, all my videos at that. But yeah, just be sure to subscribe. I'll bring you a lot more videos working on my GTA video at the moment just about halfway done but yeah I will talk to you guys later peace out Sometimes you just went down. 